I want to do an example of Green's Theorem. Uh, you may have used Green's Theorem uh, without even knowing it in Maxwell's equations, but uh, let's just do this from a mathematical point of view. So let me tell you, I'm not going to drive it, I'm going to tell you what it says in two dimensions, and then I'm going to show you that both sides of the equation are the same, unless I make a math error, uh, and then I'm going to feel dumb. But sometimes we make errors. Okay, anyway, this is what it says. It says that I can take, in two dimensions, I can take a path integral around some loop and relate it to a surface integral. So if I have, and I like to think of this in terms of forces, if I have some force, some vector force with an x and a y component, this one, I'm going to show you what this looks like. I printed this out for you. So f is x, y cubed in the x hat, and x squared minus y squared in the y hat. It's just a made-up force, and it's just for fun. It's a fun force. Okay. Then if I integrate the path integral f dot, and I'm thinking of this in terms of, of physics. So this would be the work done around some loop. It's not conservative. It could be, but it's not. If I do the work around some loop, uh, then I can also relate that to the derivatives, the partial derivatives of that force, uh, the partial of fy with respect to x minus partial of fx with respect to y, and then integrate the area of that function. And those two things should be the same. And that's what that says. So let's look at this, this uh, vector field, because I, I printed this out um, in Python. So this is f equals x y cubed x hat plus x squared minus y squared y hat. And what I want to do, I want to draw the path on here. First of all, let's just see if this makes sense, right? Because if this plot makes sense, this says that if x and y are zero, then, then the force is zero. So right here, the force is zero and there's no arrows. As I, what happens is I increase my x value. If I increase my x value, both the x and the y component should increase. So as I move this way, it has a greater and greater x component of the force. If I move only on the x-axis, though, with y equals 0, then, then there's no x component, right? Because I I'm, I'm, have a y cubed. So if y is 0, then there's no x component. And you'll see here that all these forces are, are in the y direction. As I move along the y-axis, x is 0, so there's also no x forces. But there, the, both of those cases would have a y force. In this case, if x is 0, the y component would be negative, And you see that right here. So that's that's the shape of the field, and this is the pattern that we the path we want to integrate. We want to go from here to here, and then I'm going to go up to here and then back. So let's just draw that because we can get some insight just by looking at the this path. And I'm going to use a straight edge to make it nice and a different color. You notice that? Okay. Now remember. If this was a conservative force, a conservative force integrating along this path would be zero, but it may not be that case. It could be, it could be conservative, I don't know. Right here, we'll call this path one, path two, path three. So I'm gonna integrate f dot d along, along that whole path. But look right here, if I'm going this way and the force is that way, they're perpendicular to each other. So the work done by that force should be zero along path one. We're gonna find out though. Right here, it won't be zero, and in fact, in, at this first part, it looks like I'm going in the same direction as the force, but up here I'm going against it. So this could be positive or negative, I don't know. And the same thing over here, this part looks like I'm kind of mostly perpendicular to the force, uh, and then down here it's kind of hard to tell. So all I know for sure is that one should be zero. Those could be anything. But let's go ahead and do the path integral, break it into three parts, uh, integrate around that loop, and then we'll do the, uh, the area. Okay, so piece of paper. Okay, so let me write my force. F x y cubed x hat plus x squared minus y squared y hat. And I need dr, right? Because I'm doing this. That's a closed loop of f dot dr. So I need to take the dot product of f and dr. So dr is just in Cartesian co coordinates, dr is just dx x hat plus dy dy y hat. So I can go ahead and get f dot dr. f dot dr dot dr is the same on all paths. It's going to be x y cubed dx plus x squared minus y squared dy. It's a scalar function. 
Now, you know, let me remind you for path integrals, the mistake I always make is to try to incorporate dr as an actual vector and say, well, it's going this way. So wouldn't dr be just x hat or dr be this along this direction? And no, that comes from the limits of integration. Okay, so we don't do it that way. Okay, so let's do work one. Work one is going to be the integral of that whole thing. I'll just write it out. Uh, x y cubed dx plus x squared minus y squared dy. And I didn't put the limits of integration yet because I didn't decide uh, which one I wanted to do. This is really two, two pieces. But what do I know that's true along path one? Along path one, I know that x is equal to zero. No, I'm sorry, y is equal to zero. X can be some value of here, but y is equal to zero. That's the equation of this line is y equals zero. What about the equation of that line? Well, that is x equals one, and this is uh, y equals two x, right? Because that's the, the slope of that line. Okay, so I know those two things. So I can just say uh, y equals zero. If y equals zero, I can substitute in the y's, and so this term is going to go away, right? Because I have zero times x, it doesn't really matter what that is. This one's not, but if I have that's y equals zero, then what's dy? Because I need to put in for dy. Well, the derivative of zero is also zero, so that term's zero. So I don't even have to do the limits of integration right there. And the work done along path one is zero, which is what I said. Win for me, I won. Okay, now let's do work two. I'm going to write this out again. It's going to be equal to x y cubed dx plus x squared minus y squared dy. And now along this path, I already said x equals 1. If that's true, then dx is equal to 0. If I take the derivative of x equals 1, I get dx equals 0. So that means that this term's gone, right? Because if I put dx is equal to 0, I don't have to do that. I'm just left with this term now, so I get the integral of x squared, and I can put in x as 1, so I get 1 minus y squared dy. Now I'm obviously integrating along just the y variable, so I go from y equals 0 to 2, right? Because that was the, I'm going from y equals 0 up here to y equals 2. Okay, I can do this. So this is going to be equal to, I, I'm integrating 1, it's going to be y, minus y cubed over 3, and then I need to evaluate the limits from 0 to 2. So I get 2 minus 8 thirds minus 0 plus 0, because that's for the 0. So this is going to give me, uh, let's just leave it like that, 8 minus 2, 2 minus 8 thirds. Okay. Now I need to do work 3. Uh, let me do it on a new piece of paper because I don't really need to save paper. Uh, so work three, again, I'm going to write out the same thing. It's going to be equal to x y cubed dx plus x squared minus y squared dy. Now, and I know that y equals 2x. So let's just um, substitute in y is equal to 2x right here, and we need to find dy right here. So in this case, if I take the derivative of both sides of this equation, I get dy equals 2 dx. So now I can substitute in, and I get the integral x, and then I get y cubed, which is going to be 8x cubed dx, plus, there I have an x squared, I don't need to do anything with that, x squared uh, minus y cubed y cubed is going to be this cubed, so it's going to be minus, no, this squared, minus 4x squared. And now for dy, I have 2dx. And now I've turned it into an x integral. So let's just simplify this. I'm going to go from x equals 1 to 0, right? I'm going, I'm going from here, which is x equals 1, to there, which is x equals 0, not the other way around. That is important. So this is going to be 8x to the 4th. I'll bring the dx. Uh, this is going to be x minus 3x squared, so I get minus 3x squared. But then I have another 2 right there, so it's actually minus 6x squared dx. And now I can integrate that. I get 8x to the 5th over 5. 
and this is going to be minus uh, x cubed over 3 so out of the 6. So I get minus 2, yeah, minus 2x cubed. And then from 1 to 0. So if I evaluate this at 0, I get 0 minus 0 minus this at 1, which is going to be 8 fifths, minus this at 1, which is going to be plus 2. Is that right? I feel like I feel like I made a mistake. Eight. Let's see. So I have eight fifths. I'm checking my work from before. Two thirds. Wait. Okay. Let's see. So this is negative three times two is six. And then when I integrate that, I get x cubed over 3, which is negative 2. Hmm. That's just a mark. Okay. I might have made a mistake. Let's just do it. So work equals work 1 plus work 2 plus work 3. That's going to be 0. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's right. 2 minus uh, 8 thirds plus 2 minus 8 thirds. And then this minus eight fifths, that's right, plus two. No, this should be minus. I have just a plus two. Hmm, I think this two shouldn't be there for some reason. I'm making a mistake somewhere. It's just a stupid limits of integration. Let's see, 8 fifths 2x2, two. 8 fifths minus 8 fifths plus 2, okay, I got that, 2 minus 8 thirds, where did I get that, oh, that was from before, 2 minus 8 thirds, let's just do it, okay, maybe I'm not wrong. Okay, so this is going to be equal to 4. And then here I'm going to get, let's just do 4. And this 2 thirds. Okay, I'm, I'm going to, I'm making a mistake somewhere. I know, I did this before, and the answer is minus 4 fifteenths. So fix the error somewhere in here. Okay, I don't know. I know the answer is minus 4 fifteenths. Right? Yes. Okay, let's go ahead. I don't want to waste too much time on that. I, what I want to do is I want to do the other si <clears throat> side of Green's theorem. I want to do this part. I want to do the double integral over the surface area. Okay. Okay, so let's do this part. I'm going to draw my, my area here like that. And I want to do this. The double integral of the partial of Fy with respect to x minus the partial of fx with respect to y dA. So the first thing I need to do is find this. Okay, so here I have f equals xy cubed x hat plus x squared minus y squared y hat. So the partial of fy with respect to x, this is fy. If I take the partial of that with respect to x, I get 2x. Right, that, that one doesn't depend on x, and that, only, that term does. Cool. Partial of fx with respect to y, well, here I have, uh, I can take the derivative of y cubed, and I get 3xy squared. So now my integral becomes, I'll call it uh, a, let's call it a. a equals the double integral of this, 2x minus 3xy cubed dx dy. Okay, so now we have to make a choice, right? We have to integrate twice. And in fact, I'm going to break this into uh, pieces like this. So I'm, I'm going to integrate along this, along the y direction, and then add those up this way. So if that's the case, this, the bottom of this little rectangle is y equals 0. The top of this, this is, remember, uh, y equals 2x. So the top of that is 2x. So I'm going to go from y equals 0. I'm going to switch these around. 
So I'm going to go y equals 0 to y equals 2x of this function, 2x minus 3xy cubed dy, and then I'm going to add up all of those from x equals 0 to 1 x equals 0 to x equals 1 dx. Okay, so let's do this first integral first with respect to y. So I'm going to integrate this with, with respect to y. I'm going to start a new piece of paper because I feel like I feel crowded. And I don't want to feel crowded. I want to feel free. I want to feel like I have plenty of room. Okay, so let me write this out again. A x equals 0 to 1 y equals 0 to 2x, 2x minus 3xy cubed, that is a cubed, no, squared, squared dy dx. So let's integrate this with respect to y. This is going to be equal to uh, 0 to 1. If I integrate 2x with respect to y, I get 2xy, 2xy. And then this is going to be minus 3xy cubed over 3. And now I'm going to evaluate that dx at the limits of 0 to 2x. And when I do that, I'll get a function that only depends on x. So it's going to be equal to uh, 0 to 1. Now I'm going to evaluate this at 2x. So I get uh, 2, and um, y is equal to 2x. So I'll get 2x times 2x minus, that's just the threes cancel, minus 2, no, y cubed, minus x times 2x cubed, which is going to be 8x cubed dx. Okay, so let's, x equals 0 to x equals 1. Now this is going to be 4x squared, and this is going to be minus 8x to the fourth dx. So if I integrate that, I get x cubed, 4x cubed over 3, minus x to the fifth, 8x to the fifth over 5, 0 to 1. And now that's pretty easy. I get 4 thirds minus 8 fifths, right, because x is equal to 1, and then I put in x equals 0 and I get nothing. So this is going to be equal to getting a common denominator. It's going to be 20 multiply that top and bottom by 5, minus 24 over 15 equals negative 4 fifteenths. So that, that one did work out. I knew the answer. And so there we did it. We did both sides of Green's theorem, and we showed that they're equal. And I didn't derive Green's theorem. Um, but it was a fun process. You know, it helps us remember how to do surface integrals, line integrals, uh, and stuff like that. So hopefully you find that useful. Um, probably do some more examples, and that's that.